Hi folks, so the question we have in front of us here today guys is an oblique plane question uh, where we have an oblique plane BTH and we have a hexagonal base pyramid as well, okay? And uh, we can see the plan view of that hexagonal base pyramid here and the elevation, the incomplete elevation up here, okay? And we've also got a pictorial view of it down here to guide us as well. Now it says, given our departure plan and elevation of a solid, the solid is caught by the oblique plane VTH, Produce an edge view of the oblique plane and complete the projections of the solid by locating where it is cut. Okay, so what we're going to actually have to do here, guys, is we have the oblique plane VTH. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in there a little bit better so we can see it a bit better. Okay, we've got the oblique plane VTH. We've obviously got the partial or the solid here down in plan. Okay, and we've got it up here in elevation, incomplete in elevation. But what we actually need to do is because the lines, if I was to label these points, Okay, I'm going to label the apex O, I'd label it up here O as well, and I'd label the base, then I'm going to use letters, I'm going to say A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so we have A here, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, just take the line A to O, okay? We cannot tell exactly where that is cut at this moment in time, okay? We do not know. The only way we can actually see where that's cut is by taking an edge view of our oblique plane. Therefore, when that edge view cuts through it in our auxiliary view, okay, we will be able to determine where along the line AO uh, we will be able to get the cut section of it, okay? Uh, if I was to project up and take a horizontal, um, sorry, a horizontal cutting section through A, uh, so parallel to the horizontal trace up to uh, where it hits the XY line, up to hit the vertical trace and come across. That doesn't work because technically A, as we know, is on the ground. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to take uh, an auxiliary view of our oblique plane to get it as an edge view. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start off by just taking a random height. Okay, I'll take it from here. I'm going to put it in in green. That height there is going to help me get my edge view of the oblique plane okay so that height there and what i'm actually going to do now is i'm going to look perpendicular or sorry what we're doing is we're looking in along the horizontal trace uh, the horizontal trace is where the oblique plane is cuts the horizontal plane and when we look along that okay because that's actually a true length when we look along that we're seeing that as a point view okay so looking along that horizontal trace there <clears throat> i'm actually going to do it this way Looking along that horizontal trace, a little that, and then rotate it sideways there, and get my x1, y1. I'll keep it quite close to it. Okay, now that I have that edge, put it in a little bit longer. Something like that there. I think that'd be fine. And I will call that an x1, <coughs> y1. Okay. So I'll actually just move, zoom out there a little bit so you can see that. Okay, so what I've done there is I've projected up perpendicular to my horizontal trace, okay? Now at this point, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to project up all of these points, uh, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and O, okay? All the way up to my X1, Y1. So first of all, I'll actually get that. And that there, that point right there is a point view of HT, my horizontal trace. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to project up parallel with the rest of them. Make sure it doesn't slip. So F is up here, it's on the ground. Same with A. You know they're all on the ground. It's sitting flat on the ground. So is E. Um, project up O. I know O is the one that needs to go up a certain height. Same with B. Same with D, and finally, C. Okay, and the last one I'm actually going to project up is this guy right here, okay? Remember at the very start I needed that height? The reason I took that height is because I need a point on the vertical trace, and I know that is where the vertical trace is cutting through my uh, vertical plane. So, I'm going to take that there, and along that one, I'm going to mark that distance, Take that distance up, I'm going to mark that right there, happy with that, and then project up, follow it up here to where it is, and there it is, right there, or cut through there. That is a point on my vertical trace, connect that back to where it is the point view of the horizontal trace, 
and there now we have an or oh, sorry an edge view edge view of oblique plane so technically what we actually have there is the inclination that the plane makes to the horizontal trace okay that angle in there is the inclination it makes now the next one we're actually going to get is we're going to get the height okay from O so I'm just going to connect these up here that'll help me get a perpendicular height there okay just that height from O and I need that height because that height I have to project up to my auxiliary view project from the plan take your heights from the elevation just about there, yep, happy with that. So where O is followed up to the X and Y one, it's right here. And as you can see, I need to extend up my line just a little bit further. So I haven't already put up the line, I can just extend it on there. And now we've got O. Now technically this would be called O1. Okay, so I'm gonna label the rest of these. So that there is F1, then I've got A1, followed over here, B1. C1, I assume this is D1 as we're working backwards. E1, okay, and finally F1, which I've already done. Now I connect all of these up. 2O. Connect E up to O. Same with B. Same with D. And finally, the same with C. Okay. Having done that, now we can actually determine where we have the cut points, okay, on our lines O to A, B, or sorry, uh, A to O, B to O, C to O, D to O, and so on, okay? Uh, we can actually determine the exact cutting points and the cut face of this solid, okay, when it has been cut by the oblique plane. So we can see here with the line F, okay, uh, as we look in along this direction, we would see the line F connected up to O a certain distance, the same with E, the same with D. Probably, if I'm looking in along there, yeah, maybe I'll probably see the line E, we'll see in a second, okay? The line B to O, uh, A to O, maybe, I'm not 100% sure, depending on perpendicular, I actually don't think we will see, I think we will see this one, we won't see that one, okay? But anyway, we'll work that out in a second. So, in having that in, I'll heavy up here as far as there, uh, I'm going to heavy in my E one, okay? I know I definitely see the line F to O, I know I see the line E to O, I know I see the line D to O, and I know I see the line C to O as well. Okay, so at this point now, do I see, we can see here obviously the face O, F, E, we have it here, O down to F down to E, we see that face there, clearly then that A is behind it, so A is actually in hidden detail. Okay, and the last one, B, we know is, all, is also in hidden detail. So I'll connect that up and put that in hidden detail. Okay. Um, now, at this point, what we actually have found is the points location for our cut uh, solid. So for F, it would be here, right there. Uh, for A, it's there. For E, it is here. For B, it is here. For D it is here and for C it is here. Okay, so very simple at this point. It's literally a case of we projected up our auxiliary view and our heights to find them. So now we can project back the points that we have found. Okay, back to the horizontal, uh, back parallel with the horizontal trace. So for F, it's this one. So it cuts it right there. Okay, but always just make a little mark. Don't have to. Just to give you a little bit of guidance. This one is A. So that one is there. Okay, you can see where these are going, okay. Now I'm just going to continue on. Now we've got E. It's this one. Uh, B is the next one I have as I'm going along it. Uh, the next one is D. And finally, C. Okay, so I'll just mark those, uh, having found them. So point there, point there, point there, and point there. Okay, so connect those up. I know F connects over to A, A connects to B, B to C, uh, C onto the D edge, C 
same over here and finally back to F and as we can see there now we have actually found the cut surface of our solid when we look at it in the plan view okay all helped by taking an auxiliary view at the very very start so just put in that there and this and finally the last one there okay that is our plan view of our cut solid. Uh, having found the plan view, we probably need to find the elevation. So at this point here, I know A is there, but I want to find where it cuts on A. So project that up. So mark that up. Don't have to do the lines as you can see, but I'll mark it up for A there. All right, and I'll make a mark on the line. Now, you do not have to mark them up completely. So F, I'll actually just to give you a little bit of demonstration. So A is here. I know B and F are actually here. B is at the back, F is at the front. Uh, e and C, E is at the front, C is at the back, so they share the same line, and D is over here. Okay, so at this point, now what I'm going to do is for the line for the point on F, instead of actually doing another line all the way, marking it up, I'm just going to keep it neat and tidy. Okay, so for F, I know it cuts right there. For B, which is on the same line I know it cuts up there. Okay, just so I'm aware of that. For C, it cuts up here. And for D, which is out here. And for E, which is in here. Okay. I could have done the lines directly up, guys. I'll actually just do it on one or two of them, just to give you the idea. So for the C one, you can see, or sorry, for the D one, you can see it was there. And for the C1, you can see it was up here. Okay, uh, I'm just trying to keep the drawing neat and tidy as best I possibly can. Okay, so same thing like we did down here. I'm going to start with A because I know A connects over to B, which is here at the back. Okay, B connects across to C, so it's this one. Uh, C connects over to D. D connects down to E, which I had a mark there for, E down to F, and finally F back to A. So heavy into detail, that's important to us. We will see the edge A here, we'll see the edge F, we'll see the edge E, and we'll see the edge D. Okay, so we'll see all those edges, but obviously we know B and F, if I was to project them up, I'll just do it with one of them. B and F, when they were on the ground, would share the same. You can see here that they're sharing the same, okay? The same, this, the same point, okay? So that actually means then, when we're looking in this direction, that B, which is at the back, we do not see. So that there should go in as hidden detail. And it's the same with the edge C at the back. Once again, hidden detail, all right? Uh, now at this point what I would always do as well is I would use a little bit of color Okay, just to let the examiner know that I have found the cut solid and the cut surface Okay, so I'm just going to speed up the video there while I shade that in Right folks, so as you can see there, I've basically just uh, shaded in the cut surface both in my plan view and my elevation view. Probably would have been easier uh, using a pencil than a green pen. Um, also as well, just let the examiner know, cut surface as well. Cut surface. And you can put in a little arrow like that, okay? Uh, that is the question complete there guys. A little bit in that, okay? Uh, just remember when you look along the horizontal trace, okay? Perpendicular to the horizontal trace and set up an auxiliary view in X1, Y1, okay? We will see, excuse me, we will see the horizontal trace as a point view. We then took a point on our vertical trace, the height here, projected that up to be able to get the vertical trace, okay? And what that actually helps us is locate the edge view of the oblique plane. Therefore, with the edge view, we could actually locate our various cutting points on the solid, okay? So, tricky enough question, guys, but once again, uh, just take it in steps, and it'll actually be quite easy as long as you just follow those steps, okay? Um, that's the question completed there. 
Right folks, so the next question we have on this page is uh, this time we're actually dealing with a cone that is cut by an oblique plane, okay? So anytime you have a cone, we know we're actually going to have to basically split up that cone and use generators. So you can see the oblique plane here, VTH, okay, we've kind of got a pictorial view down here. And um, the, v, uh, the VTH, guys, is cutting through the cone, okay? The problem is we do not know exactly where it is cutting through. So what we're going to have to do is, it says here the cone is cut by an oblique plane, produce an edge view of the oblique plane. So we're going to have to look in, once again, along our horizontal trace to get that as a point view, and then get the cutting plane, or sorry, the oblique plane, okay, as an edge view. And we'll actually be able to find that where it's cutting on our cone. And what we're going to do is we're going to use generators to help us locate exact points so we'll be able to sketch in then the actual uh, cut surface. So anytime you do this, I would always advise you to start off by splitting up your cone in your plan view, okay, into 12 equal sections, so 30, 60 through the center. So 60 degrees there, 60 degrees here. Thirty degrees this way, and finally thirty degrees this way. And what we're going to do is we're going to label it like stock. So for the sake of this generator here, I'm going to call it number twelve, one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. Having found those points in my elevation in my plan, or sorry, in my plan, I need to find them in my elevation. So we can see nine matches up there, and it's the same with three over here. Okay, and by using 30, 60, we can see that eight will match up with 10. So I'm not going to do my lines up through here, okay, I'm going to keep it neat and tidy. Seven matches up with 11, okay, so there we go. 12 obviously is, I'm just going to put in that line the whole way because that goes up to the apex. Uh, one matches up with five happy with that and two matches up at four happy with that okay so this line up here is actually two and four all right so if i was to label them again in my elevation so this would be nine here three is on the outside okay then i've got 12 and six so i'm going to go either side uh, i got one and five we can see five is below it then i got two and four and uh, coming over here i've got seven and eleven so it goes one two three 4, 5, 6, 7 and 11, so 7 here, 11, and then 8 and 10. Okay, and all of those are generators, okay, and they all connect up to the apex, which I'm actually going to call O, okay, so that's O at the top, and every one of them is a generator. So this is all a construction, I'm going to connect up 8 and 10, because somewhere along 8 and 10 I'm going to have a point that the oblique plane cuts through it, same with 7 and 11. 1 and 5, and finally 2 and 4. And there we go. Okay, so they're all generators that have been put in on our cone. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to project up an auxiliary view. So I'm going to look in along my horizontal trace because that is a true length, okay, as we see it in our plan view. And I'm going to get that anytime you look along a true length, okay, and set up an auxiliary view, you will see the true length as a, as a point view. So Long there, set up perpendicular, and as ever, move this out of the way so a bit more room. Visualizer gets in the way. So looking along there, I'm now going to set up the next one by one perpendicular to that. And as you can see, that was set up perpendicular. Nice and easy there. And what we are going to do then, just extend that on a bit. So that is my x1, y1, set up perpendicular to my horizontal trace, x1, y1, and I'm going to now project up <clears throat> my various points. So starting off with, I'm going to write in, that's where my point view, point view, don't have to write this in all the time, but if it helps, of horizontal trace. Okay, and now I am going to project up my cone. So we know that the cone obviously has a diameter. We can take it straight from over here. But I will project up all my points at once because it's going to help me. So for seven, I'm going to project it up here like this. Okay, six and eight will match up with each other. 
These are all on the ground, same with 5 and 9. Uh, 4 and 10. Okay, 3 and 11. I haven't seen working out yet. Same with 2 and 12. And finally, number 1. Okay, so there we go. So once again, labeling. So in this case, I've got 7. Then this one, 6 and 8. So you can see how it's working out. Obviously, different numbers are matching up this time. 5 and 9. I have 4 and 10. Uh, 3 and 11. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 2 and 12. And then 1. Okay. Uh, so that's that point. And we know as well, I apologize, I forgot to extend up further the line for 10. Because also on that one is my... O, okay, and somewhere up along there is my O. Okay, project from the plan, you take your heights from the elevation. So to find the height of O, I'm going to mark it up here, like that, and where O is here, follow it over here to my X and Y one. You can see it's kind of going into the other drawing, that doesn't matter. And at this point now, I will connect 7, because that is the extreme most point on the left, as we look in along the HT this way. So 7 and 1 are the ones I'm going to connect up, okay, starting off. I'll connect them all up, but just starting off, I'm going to connect up that one. Okay, so now what we've actually got is an auxiliary view of our cone looking in from this direction, okay? And it will be the exact same as this cone over here, okay? We're just looking at it from a different direction, uh, perpendicular to the horizontal trace, essentially, we've set up an auxiliary view. Now, what we're going to do now is we are going to take a height, okay, of a point on our vertical trace, so that we can see our oblique plane as an edge view. So, in doing that, I'll take any height, doesn't matter, I'm going to take it right about here. I'll take that height there. Because what that is, is that is a height of my of a point that is on the oblique on the oblique plane, but specifically on the vertical trace. Having done that now, I'm going to take that height and I'm going to project it up. So use my horizontal trace once again. Gonna go parallel to that and mark it up. And somewhere up along there is going to be a point on the vertical trace. So take that height there, as we can see. Just trying to be as accurate as possible now. And follow it up to here. Mark it up. <clears throat> and what we've actually got there now is a point on our vertical trace and if you remember when we looked along the horizontal trace we see the horizontal trace here as a point view right there once I extended it out okay so check that up now and what I've actually got here now okay is uh, my VTH and that is an edge view of the oblique plane Okay, edge view of the oblique plane, VTH. Okay, and uh, as we can see there now, guys, it has actually cut our solid. I'll draw it in. Okay, there. So as we can see, we can see that the solid has been chopped off up here. But we see it as an edge view now. So the reason we actually did at the very, very start was put in all these generators, okay, that were running from the apex is because now we can use those to actually help us locate points back here. So for seven, it obviously cuts it here and for one, it cuts there. So what I need to do is I'll actually do that first. I'm going to project them back. So once we have them in our auxiliary view, we can project them back and find where they are on the generators in our plan. So for seven, it obviously cuts right there okay because that's where the seven line connects up so right there so at that point i'm going to project it back and you can see it marks it there okay so as you can see guys i could draw that line the whole way back i will do it actually for just the seven and the one so that's the seven one okay and find the one so you can see where one was connecting up to the apex it stops here that's where the oblique plane cuts it so i project that one back and that's cutting right there. Okay, 
Now, if I wanted to find, let's say here, we can see is six and eight. So obviously just make sure, yeah, so it's this one here. So I can connect up six and eight to the apex, which was O originally. So six and eight connected up, and we can see that six and eight is cut here, okay? As it connects up to the apex, you can see that the oblique plane is cutting it right here. So at that point there, I will now draw back. So once again, parallel to the horizontal trace. And this is where six cuts six and eight. So in this case, just mark it, okay? And I'm not going to do the line the whole way back because it can get quite messy. And just mark it on the eight and the six. Okay, so there's my two points right there and right there. So I'm going to do the exact same now for the rest of them. So five and nine, I'll connect that up. Uh, four and 10 is already connected up. Just make sure I have the right one for three and 11. So it's up along this one, yes, 3 and 11 there, and finally 2 and 12. Just to be able to find them. And now once again, having done that, I can find all of those cut points. Okay, so for, I've done 6 and 8, I'm going to do 5 and 9 next. Cuts are right there. Actually matches up with my height line. Right there, so 5 and 9, so it's there and there. Uh, the next one was 4 and 10. Okay, we're going to have to do something slightly different there. Okay, I'll do that in a second. Next one was 3 and 11. So you can see 3 and 11 was cut there. So I'd mark that back. So 3 is here and 11 is here. And then finally we have 2 and 12, which is right here. So 2 and 12. So 12 is there. And then number 2. Okay. So as we can see guys, we've actually got the marks here. Now at this point, I probably could sketch it in. We've got all the marks there, but I'm still missing one on number 10 specifically and number four. So to be able to do that, what we actually need to do, okay, because this line is going up uh, perfectly perpendicular, okay, to our X and Y one, we actually need to take uh, a horizontal cutting section through it, okay, and be able to locate it that way. So we're gonna go parallel to our X and Y one, parallel to our X and Y one, and I'm going to, sorry, let's move that a little bit there. So I'm going to go parallel to my X and Y one, okay, from where the oblique plane cuts through four and 10, right here. I'll actually put it in in green. Okay. So I'm actually taking another cutting plane there, okay. That is actually a horizontal cut. So I'm just going to call that HC, okay, horizontal cut. And where that actually cuts through a cone, if we were looking directly down at it in that direction, we would see another circle, okay? So where that cuts through, technically on my extreme generators in this view, is on the number one and the number seven, okay? So where it cuts on the one or seven, I'm actually gonna project those points back. So projecting those back, I only need to project one of them. So I'll take it from, I'll take it from the number one actually. So you can see the one line here, cuts right there. Okay, remember now it is not the oblique plane cut, but this is just another cut. So if I projected that back, okay, it hits here. At that point right there, I am now going to draw in my circle. And that distance there as a radius, okay, I would now mark here and on the four as well. Okay, I could draw it in if I wanted. Now that's not the actual cutting plane, sorry, not the actual cut surface, but it just helps me locate the two points, okay? And that's how I find the point there on 10 and four, okay? That is uh, the plan view basically almost done, guys, so I'm just gonna quickly speed up the video while I sketch that in. Okay, that there, guys, is the plan view of our cone when it has been cut. Now, having done that, okay, there is a little bit in this question uh, when it's a cone, okay, and these types of questions. Having done that, what we're going to do is now we're going to locate the points up here in our elevation. So, where it cuts the six, one, and so forth, all right? So, where it cuts the number eight generator, I'm going to start with this one. It's going to cut it right there, okay? Once again, I'm going to keep my drawing neat and tidy by just marking the points rather than projecting them the whole way up. Uh, where it cuts the nine one, 
cuts there. So mark these points again, as I said. Uh, then 10 cuts it right here. Uh, 11 cuts it here. Okay, the 12 one, we're going to actually have to take um, a cutting, uh, horizontal cutting section for that one again as well, and the same with number 6. So, let's come back to those. For number 1, it's up here. For number 2, it's here. You can see it there. And for number 3, yes, sorry, it was right here. Okay, just to show you where I'm getting that, number 3, it's cutting right here. So I could do a line up like that, okay? For number four, <clears throat> it's on the four generator, so I can see the four one connecting up. For number five, here. Six, I'll skip a second, same as the 12, okay? So I'm gonna go on to number seven. So it's right there. Okay, so as you can see, we kind of have the section. You can see what it's going to roughly look like, but I'm missing a point in here for number six and obviously for number 12 up here. So in that one there, guys, is a little bit um, kind of like what we did up here by taking a horizontal cutting section. Now in our plan view, that horizontal cut would actually reveal a circle. So for number six, we we'll work out number six first. What I would do is from O, which is the center of my cone. Okay, I'm going to zoom in here now so you can see this a little bit better. All right, from O, which is the center of my cone, I'll go down to number six, and that horizontal cut would appear as a circle. So I'm going to rotate around until it's on the extreme generator, which is 3. Okay, not drawing in the whole circle. All I've done is rotate it 6 round until it hits the extreme generator, which is 3. Where it hits 3, I'm going to project that up. And then, where it hits the extreme generator, I know it's at that height. So from 3, I could literally just come across and mark it right in there. Okay, and that there, guys, is number 6. So I've actually found my point now. So I can do the exact same then for number 12. Okay, and this time, instead of rotating, last, last time I rotated this way, for this one, I'm gonna rotate this way onto the number nine, because my nine is my extreme generator on the left. So I'm gonna take this point right here, because that's where number 12 has been cut, and I'm gonna rotate it down here. So like that, as you can see. And where that hits on the extreme generator, number nine, the extreme being the one on the extreme edge, okay, so it's all the way out. So from there, and as you can see, it has cut right here. This is actually working out okay. Hitting on my accuracy here, hopefully this works out. Yeah, it's not too bad, happy with that, and that actually gives us the point in here. Okay, so there we go. Uh, you can see I've actually located all my points now on all of my generators. So I'm going to quickly, once again, sketch that in. Okay. Right, folks, uh, there we go. Uh, that is the question completed there. There's a little bit in that question, guys. Um, it can be a little bit more tricky sometimes when you've got a cone because you obviously have no definitive edges like you had over here where we had a hexagonal pyramid. In this one, when you have a cone, you're going to have to do the generator method, okay, where you get 12 generators. So then you're trying to find, obviously, a various, various amount of points. It's not just six points like we had over here in the previous question. We actually had 12 of them to locate. And obviously then as well, we also had the problem but when we were looking at it, we had, we struggled to find, uh, in this case, it was point two or sorry, 4 and 10 down here. So we did a horizontal cut. And as I said, that horizontal cut appears as a circle, helps us locate the points here. And then we kind of had to do the same thing again over in this view, where we had to find the points 12 and 6. So we actually had to do it twice over, but just different variations of it, okay? Uh, at this point, usually in an exam, guys, what you would also do as well is you would just usually shade in that cut surface there with a color, okay? Same down here in our plan view. Just showing that uh, where the oblique plane is cutting through or solid, okay? Uh, hope you found that helpful, guys. That is the question completed there, okay?